Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and this video is going to be all about the new Clyde Maintenance and Stabling Facility as part of Sydney Metro West. Now at the moment I'm on Tennyson Street. This is right on the southeast corner of the future construction site. I've got the M4 behind me. So I'm going to take you on a tour of the whole site, show you what's there at the moment, show you what's already been demolished and talk a little bit more about how the maintenance and stabling facility is going to work. The Clyde Maintenance and Stabling Facility will be between Parramatta and Sydney Olympic Park stations. It will be the only part of Sydney Metro West that is above ground. The Rose Hill Services Facility will be here as well, and I'll talk more about that later. The construction site will occupy a huge area within the Clyde and Rose Hill Industrial Estates. It will be 380,000 square metres, which makes it by far the largest construction site for the Sydney Metro West project. The construction site is bounded by the M4, James Roos Drive, Unwin Street, Shirley Street and Duck Creek. It also includes part of the former Carlingford Railway Line and I'll explain why a little later. In this video, you'll see what is left of Sydney Speedway, the old Rose Hill Station and whether any of these buildings will remain. I'll explain what will take their place and when it will happen. This is a long video, so if you don't want to watch all of it right now, then use the chapters in the description to jump to the sections that interest you the most. I'm going to start on the southeast corner and work my way around in a clockwise direction. So let's kick off with the east side of Tennyson Street as it looked in November 2021. Davcron Engineering occupied most of the east side of this road, along with Pure Natural Health, which were in this distinctive red brick building. The Wickerman outdoor furniture store has closed permanently and appears to be no longer in business. All these other buildings were part of Davcron Engineering, who specialise in making concrete mixers. They have now moved to Auburn. This older white brick building looks like an old warehouse. It seems to have been unoccupied for quite a while. By the 29th of May, this building within the Davcron site had gone. Let's now take a look at the west side of Tennyson Street and the east side of Dennehy Street. In the background is the M4 and on the west side is the vehicle entrance and now the front entrance of number 8, which was occupied by ERP Concrete Services. They moved out further west to Horsley Park. This modern two-storey building at 6 Tennyson Street had offices and warehouses for nine businesses. This included Gill Media that have now relocated to Smithfield. Next is Granville Sewage Pumping Station. I wonder what will happen to that? This old oil refinery and diesel station looks like it's been closed and abandoned for a long time. Here are two of the old diesel pumps. It was owned by Rapid Oil Distributors and this is the first of several motor vehicle businesses that are going to make way for the new Sydney Metro West Stabling and Maintenance Facility. Now looking west towards the junction with Dennehy Street. Dennehy Street is a mix of commercial buildings on the left side, that's the east side, and on the west side is the back of Sydney Speedway. Now I'll talk a little bit more about that a little later in this video. This is looking north on Dennehy Street. Davcron Engineering were on the right. The road at the end probably goes to the old Sydney Speedway. Now looking south, Tennyson Street and Rapid Oil Distributors are now on the left, and at the end of Dennehy Street is the M4 motorway bridge. After the Rapid Oil Refinery building was City Fine Foods, which was at number 4. They relocated to Lincoln. Next was FK Plant Hire at number 3. As far as I can tell, this business hasn't yet found a new location. And to now number 1, which was Clyde Auto Wreckers. So that's the second motor vehicle business to be moving. They are now in Penrith. And also One World Metal Recycling, who moved to the Hume Highway in Lansvale. All businesses on Dennehy Street have moved out by November 2021 and on the 14th of June 2022 both Dennehy Street and Tennyson Streets were permanently closed. In the next few months all the buildings and both roads will be demolished and become part of Sydney's history. The M4 motorway which is right behind me effectively marks the southern perimeter of the Clyde Maintenance Facility construction site. Which means that some of the best views of the construction work are likely to be from the M4. And on the M4 wall was a sign for the Wicker Man. Anyone following this sign will soon be scratching their head in bewilderment. Behind me is one of the entrances to the old Sydney Speedway. Now of all the commercial businesses that are going to make way for Sydney Metro West, this is the one that attracted the most media attention. 
Sydney Speedway occupied a huge area that was bounded by Dennehy Street, the M4, Wentworth Street and Duck Creek. It's the largest single business by area to be going. These are the entry gates. The racetrack is on the other side of this small hill where the fences are. There is an older building here that looks like some kind of accommodation and this building in front of the M4 which looks like a warehouse or shed. Sydney Speedway's commercial or business name was Valvoline Raceway and Valvoline had many advertising boards such as this one. Here is another building just on the other side of the entrance. And this is the back of the main stand. Sydney Speedway was a dirt track racing venue that opened in 1977 and closed on the 18th of April 2021. It had capacity for 10,000 people. If you would like to see more of Sydney Speedway, then Phil and Warren from Abandoned Oz got permission to go inside and film it. Link to their video appearing in the top right and in the description below. I hope removing this sign on the Parramatta Road is on someone's to-do list. A brand new Sydney Speedway has been built over at Eastern Creek. And here's a bit of trivia for you. It was built by Sydney Metro. The new Speedway opened in March 2022 and cost around 70 million. So I guess Sydney Speedway counts as a motor vehicle business that is going. So we're up to three. The area immediately to the west of Sydney Speedway was used by Sydney helicopters and as a local sports ground. Here was the old sports ground that was adjacent to the speedway. If you've been to this sports ground or to Sydney Speedway, do let me know in the comments below. Access to Sydney helicopters was via Hell Warren Way, which is this road here. Sydney helicopters had been here for 27 years and have now moved to Nepean Aerospace Park in Penrith. The speedway is now appearing again on the right. This is the end of Wentworth Street and behind these trees is Duck Creek and some overgrown grass, which I think was part of the old Sydney helicopters site. The west side of Wentworth Street and north side of K Street contained a number of commercial buildings. The first was Sydney City Smash Repairs, who repair motorbikes after accidents. They moved to Campbelltown. So that's the fourth motor vehicle related business that has moved. Then VO Group Australia, who are a construction company that specialise in building facades and metalwork. They're still around with their main office in North Sydney. Then Samota's food distributors who moved to Seven Hills and now this bright pink building that was occupied by Winston. They moved to Yonora and have pink shops all over Sydney that sell blinds, shutter doors, grills and awnings. This building continued into K Street. Here is a view of this building and the ones behind from K Street. By the 10th of April 2022, all of these buildings had gone. They were still standing on the 12th of March, so they all went within five weeks. This was viewed from Wentworth Street towards the corner with K Street. Peering through the fence, all I can see is the remains of a couple of foundations and nothing else. Well, except for a tiny bit of pink. Now looking north from K Street, the future sidings will be in this area and I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. So all the buildings in this area have now gone and on the 14th of June 2022, the north part of Wentworth Street was permanently closed at the junction with K Street. The fencing has gone up and this part of Wentworth Street will soon be no more, along with How Warren Way. So let's now take a look at this area on the south side of K Street and the west side of Wentworth Street. Now on the south side of K Street and the trees that line Duck Creek are on the right and very conveniently there was Powerfinger who make cranes and Binksy Services who repaired cranes. By the 10th of April these had both gone. This building on the corner was for Heiko Electrics who are electrical contractors. As far as I can tell both Heiko Electrics and Binksy Services have not yet found new locations so I'm a little curious as to what has happened to them. Now looking southwest into Wentworth Street. The next building to go was used by Living Design Furniture. I think this was their warehouse which moved to Wetherill Park. By early April demolition work was well underway. This grey building contained BKB motor vehicle repairs. So that's the fifth motor vehicle business that's going. They moved to Eastwood. 
Then BNC lawyers, who ironically are acting for people that were affected by property acquisitions for Sydney Metro West. They do have other offices, including one in Sydney CBD. This was how their building looked in early April. I don't think it will be around for much longer. Next was this fairly modern office and warehouse building. Access Print Solutions occupied number 36 and another printing company occupied number 34. By the 29th of May 2022, all these buildings had gone and this is how this part of Wentworth Street now looked. All of that to remain are some concrete slabs to mark where the buildings used to be and the trees that line Duck Creek in the background. Now the eastern part of K Street without the buildings. The trees lining Duck Creek are now appearing on the right. A little reminder of where number 48 used to be. One final look at this area of nothingness. Wentworth Street is on the left, K Street is behind me, and the M4 motorway seems much more noisy without these buildings here. So all businesses on the west side of Wentworth Street have now gone, except for this one. Under the M4 motorway bridge on Wentworth Street, the Stay Upright Motorcycle Training Centre is still open, and is helping people stay on their bikes. It's the only business open and still standing on this part of Wentworth Street. It is sandwiched between the M4 and a slip road, and is just outside the construction site, so it will be staying. Now let's take a look at this area on the north side of K Street. This is the bridge over Duck Creek, and to the left of this was IMP Coatings. They did metal spraying and abrasive blasting. This was an old warehouse that's been looking like this since 2014. It used to look like this. There used to be another warehouse in the middle, and then this yellow shed. It looks like IMP Coatings moved out of this area several years ago, and I reckon these buildings were derelict before Sydney Metro took them over. Next was this small building that looked residential, but probably wasn't, and then this blue warehouse for YME Metal Projects, which was on the corner with Umwin Street. Another view of this corner with the blue warehouse on the right. And some more views of the old YME Metal Projects buildings from Unwin Street. This business moved to Wetherall Park. This is A Beckett's Creek, which is staying, but will be hidden from view. More on this shortly. That previous footage was on the 30th of January 2022 or earlier. By the 5th of March, so five weeks later, all these buildings had gone. And replaced with a view of James Roos Drive. That wasn't there before. All that's left is a drainage channel. And some foundations. And this excavator that's thinking, what have I just done? So this area north of K Street is no more. Now let's take a look at this little area on the south side and to the west of Duck Creek. With the Duck Creek Bridge on the left, this building coming into view was 3 to 5 K Street. The main occupants were class concrete and construction. It looked fairly modern and had this distinctive curved balcony. It also had this blue and green warehouse immediately behind it, and another building that looked like a toilet block, but probably wasn't. These buildings were still standing in April 2022, but by the 29th of May, they had all gone. All that remains is the building entry system. And the steps leading to the entrance. And the foundations. So K Street has now been stripped of all its buildings. One final look at K Street minus the buildings. And K Street won't be around for much longer. I'll explain why soon. Anyway, enough demolition for now. Let's talk about what will be here in the future. All the land and properties that you have seen so far will become the future Clyde Maintenance and Stabling Facility. As you can see, the future sidings go over the three roads that closed on the 14th of June 2022. As a reminder, these are Tennyson Street, Dennehy Street and this section of Wentworth Street. The sidings will also cross other parts of Wentworth Street, K Street and the approach tracks will cross Unwin Street and I'll explain how this will work shortly. The maintenance facility and workshop will be on the north part of the old speedway, continuing to where Sydney helicopters used to be. The future maintenance facility building will be constructed first, so that it can be used as a site office and storage facility for the duration of the construction work. The area further north between A Beckett's Creek, Duck Creek, Shirley Street and Unwin Street will become the Rose Hill Services facility. Let's discover what is or was here. I'll start with this area at number 1 Unwin Street, which is owned by Downer. 
Now you might have heard of Downer, they've made many freight locomotives and passenger trains, although I don't think any have ever been made here. Now interestingly, this is one of the few bits of industry that is still operating. This is looking into the Downer site from James Roos Drive. In the background is an asphalt mixing plant and then a couple of warehouses. Now looking from Unwin Street with A Beckett's Creek immediately to the right. This is their reception building which has quite a lot of character. The trees make it very difficult to see the side of the reception building but this next building is even more interesting. It looks like it was built in the 1950s or 1960s. I couldn't find any information on the purpose of this building or whether it is heritage listed or not. Notice the number of chimneys on this building. Downer is the first business that will be within the construction site that is still operating and it looks like it will continue to do so for a few more months. Here is another view of Downer's asphalt plant. This is looking south from Unwin Street. Their site also includes a recycling plant. Downer will be relocating to a new site on Devon Street, which is within the former Shell Clyde Oil Refinery site. The next area is 1B Unwin Street, which occupied the west and north sides of this road. Several businesses used to operate here. I'll start on the west side of Unwin Street. This is one of the entrances to 1B Unwin Street as it looked in January 2021. By January 2022, all the businesses had moved out. I was pleasantly surprised by the number of trees around this entrance. This is the second entrance as it looked in January 2021. And now in November 2021. By April 2022, the second entrance and buildings had gone, leaving the remains of the first entrance and not much else. Here are the remains of the second entrance and access roads, along with some other rubble. Now looking towards the south, the buildings in the background are part of Downer. Some of the businesses that used to be here include Manito, who build construction trucks, and Waco Quickform, who are a scaffolding hire company. They moved to roads. This is now looking east. Unwin Street is still behind me, and also on the left side after it turns right. There is one building still standing. It must be here for a reason. The only building that's still standing on the north side of Unwin Street is this Department of Main Roads building. And there's a reason for that, it's heritage listed. It's the former RTA building and has been used as an industrial workshop for many years. The brick walls and the vertical and horizontal concrete supports will be retained. It is within the construction site, so will be lovingly looked after by Sydney Metro and become part of the future services facility site. The top section has Department of Main Roads inscribed on it, along with the year 1944 above it. It was used as a machinery depot during World War II, so has lots of history around it, which is one of the reasons for protecting it. It's also a rare example of an amenity and services building from the 1940s era. Now it's just the front of this building that is staying, as that has the most heritage significance. These steel trusses that supported the former sawtooth roof are in pretty bad condition, so will be going. I'm not sure about the concrete frame though. Something will be needed to support the front facade, so it would make sense to retain these. Here is a view of this building from the other side. A small section of the roof is still visible and the Department of Main Road's top facade is here. Now continuing along Unwin Street, and this access road which is coming into view now marks the eastern edge of 1B Unwin Street, which is here on the map. Back in November 2021, there were some other buildings on this site, such as this one here, and also an old railway line. You can see this railway line veering off to the left. By April 2022, all these other buildings had gone, but the railway line was still there, although not as easy to see. So with the exception of the old RTA building, 1B Unwin Street is no more. I'm now going to backtrack slightly to cover what will happen to Unwin Street, K Street and part of Wedworth Street to prevent them from being in the way of the future access tracks and sidings. This new road, which to avoid any confusion will be called Unwin Street, will start just here on Wentworth Street. It will then run around the edge of the sidings and then cross the tracks on a bridge and then join the existing Unwin Street just here. This will allow this part of Wentworth Street to be demolished. Along with K Street. Including the curve into Unwin Street. 
and the section of Unwin Street that runs close to James Roos Drive and the old Carlingford Railway Line. This is Unwin Street looking south towards the left turn into K Street, and now looking north with the Downer site on the right. Now from here looking south to north. You can see the elevated James Roos Drive, and behind the bushes is the old Carlingford Railway Line track bed. You can view it from various points along this road and from James Roos Drive, and I will do a separate video on what is left of the old Carlingford line soon. And the last part of Unwin Street that will go is the curve to the right and then a small part of the top section that runs alongside the Rose Hill Racecourse. Now looking from the top section towards the corner. The Rose Hill Racecourse is on the right and the remains of Wombie Unwin Street is coming into view now. The new Unwin Street will come through this area and then join the existing Unwin Street just before the old RTA building. So I reckon that will be around about here. The new Unwin Street will have a shared path and will hopefully have good views of the maintenance facility from the bridge. And from this road generally, as some of it will be elevated, typically about 250 metres above the tracks. The new Unwin Street will be constructed first and is due to be completed by 2024, Work to build the maintenance facility will then happen from 2025 onwards. The approach tracks will go over A. Beckett's Creek, which currently looks like this. And many of the sidings will go over Duck Creek, which is looking like this right now. Ouch, I've just been bitten by a mozzie. Underground corvettes will be built to allow the lines and roads to go over the top of these two creeks. And parts of the creeks will also be realigned with new open channels created. This fence behind me is where the old Carlingford line was and this is going to be reused to allow metro trains to access this new maintenance facility. Let me explain how this will work. So the tracks and the new Unwin Street will go over the current downer site and then across part of the old 1B Unwin Street area. Three tracks will then cross the existing Unwin Street, which will no longer be there, to access the old Carlingford line track bed. The track on the right will end here. I guess this will be a shunt track. A dive site will then be created to allow the two tracks to descend and go underground. Unfortunately, this will require the demolition of the old Rose Hill station. More on this shortly. These two tracks will then join the main Sydney Metro lines via a grade separated underground junction. With one track joining the westbound line under Oak Street and the other joining the eastbound line close to Alfred Street. Thank you so much to OpenStreetMap contributors for adding all these lines to their maps. You've saved me a lot of work. To see this map for yourself, go to OpenStreetMap.org. So now you've seen these future tracks on the map, let's see some of the places where these new tracks will go. This is Unwin Street looking north to where it bends to the right. The tracks would cross this road around here, but remember that this road will have been demolished. And by here, which is the top corner of Unwin Street, the three tracks will have joined the old Carlingford track bed, which when I filmed this in November 2021, contained orange conduits and other equipment for Parramatta Light Rail. Then on the approach to the old Rose Hill station, which is behind me, the dive site would start and the tracks will begin to descend. The station platforms would be demolished and replaced with the tunnel portal walls. This would be a cut and cover method of construction, and I reckon the tunnel portal roof that will cover the two tracks would start just before the footbridge that I'm standing on now. The tunnel portal would continue through the old station, but by now it would be covered over, so the tracks will no longer be visible. The tunnels that will link to the metro lines will be excavated using a road header and will veer slightly to the left to go under James Roos Drive. So sadly, the old Rose Hill station will be going, which means that the heritage listed footbridge will be going too. A number of options were considered including relocating it, but it's complicated because its heritage significance is partially linked to its location within the old Rose Hill station, so it wouldn't look quite the same somewhere else. And relocating it would require upgrading it to meet Disability Discrimination Act requirements, which would involve adding a couple of lifts. So the footbridge will be going, and prior to demolition, significant heritage fabric will be identified for salvage and potential reuse. And the bridge will be recorded, both in old style film and digitally, for heritage archiving purposes. I believe this footbridge opened in 1959 when Rose Hill Station was moved to its current location. 
an alternative temporary bridge will be provided to retain access to the Rose Hill Racecourse whilst the construction work is taking place. It's now time to explore this area of Unwin Street between the Access Road and Shirley Street. This was all part of 1C Unwin Street and there were several businesses operating here. This building was occupied by CHEP Logistics who are a transport and distribution company. They have a few other sites including one in Lidcombe. This is how it looked in November 2021 when viewed from Unwin Street. The entrance was here and now viewing from the Access Road. Besides the buildings on the left, there was another old railway line here as well. 1B Unwin Street and the Heritage RTA building is right behind me, so perhaps these railway lines were connected in the past. If you know, do share this in the comments below. The warehouse on the right was part of Coates Hire. Here is a view of the Coates Hire building from the front. This was in January 2021 and it already looked unoccupied. According to Google Street View, it was operating in July 2020. During December 2021, the Coates Hire building disappeared. This was one of the first buildings to be demolished. And then during January 2022, the main CHEP warehouse disappeared. By early March 2022, all these buildings had gone. I don't think CHEP Logistics used the rail tracks, and being a road transport business, I make this the sixth motor vehicle business that has gone. And rather ironically, some Coates Hire vehicles have appeared where their old business used to be. After the old Coates Hire entrance was this building. I couldn't find out who was using this building, it may well have been Coates Hire as well. This white building was occupied by Unimin, who are a mining and minerals company that are now known as Covia. Then on the corner with Shirley Street was Form 700, who specialise in concrete construction and project management. This is Shirley Street coming into view on the left. Along with Coates Hire, the Form 700 and Unimin buildings were the first to go, with demolition taking place during December 2021. By early March 2022, all of 1C Unwin Street had been demolished. However, there is something lurking behind this area, and it looks like it's still operational. So I'm now at the northeast corner of the construction site. Behind me is Unwin Street, and if I swing round, now behind me is Shirley Street. One final look at 1C Unwin Street from Shirley Street. This area is important as the Sydney Metro tunnels will be directly underneath, so could be a handy tunnel access point. So a quick recap, 1B and 1C Unwin Street have gone, except for the RTA building, and Downer is still operational. Let's look at what is along Shirley Street, starting with this area. This is 6 Shirley Street, which is occupied by high-tech concrete and aggregates. This is the only other business besides Downer that is still in operation. You can see the large concrete mixers in the background, along with a conveyor belt. These buildings on the right were part of 1C Unwin Street, so are no longer around. High-tech concrete and aggregates have over 10 other locations in New South Wales, and many others within Australia. And now a familiar Sydney Metro fence, which marks the last area to cover. And this area is number 2 Shirley Street. This Google Street View image was taken in September 2020, which was before Transport Vlog started. Businesses in this area included Killard Infrastructure. By November 2021, the only building left was this one at the back. And by April, this building had gone. You can now see across the whole site, which gives you a sense of how large this area is. Duck Creek is over on the left where the trees are, which is also where the construction site will end. So to recap, as of June 2022, the majority of the buildings had gone, except for the downer and high-tech premises that were still operating, and of course the Heritage RTA building. Now panning to the south of Shirley Street, and all these commercial buildings which are on the east side of Shirley Street will be staying. Which is good, as this area is much more modern and inviting compared to some of the other parts that you saw earlier. And this includes number 2 Unwin Street, which is on the corner with Shirley Street, this building then continues along the east side of Shirley Street. The area required to build something is often larger than the space needed to operate it, and this is certainly the case with the Rose Hill Services Facility site. Sydney Metro will use this space for the services facility, and this area for the tracks leading into the maintenance facility. And of course the new Unwin Street and the former RTA building will take up some space as well. 
The services facility will include a large services building that will include tunnel ventilation and emergency access to the tunnels via a vertical shaft that will be excavated. There will also be a traction substation here as well. So it looks like there will be space for other buildings, probably commercial ones, in the future. So now you know a little or perhaps even a lot more about the new Clyde maintenance facility as part of Sydney Metro West. So if you enjoyed this video, do give it a like, give it a thumbs up, do leave a comment or question below and I'll do my best to answer any questions. Do subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already and also check out my perks on Patreon, there's a link in the description below. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.